Welcome to another Understanding Human Anatomy video. And in this video, I want to discuss in de a little more detail the rectus sheath. So we're going to start by sketching in two rectus abdominis muscles. One here, and one here, and we'll fill both of those in with color. And I'm going to try and stay to the same color scheme that I used in the previous videos on the abdominal wall. Uh, we'll put a label in here for the muscle and also over here like so. Now we'll start by sketching in the transverse abdominis muscle. On each side. And we need to put the tendon of the transverse abdominis in. The tendon will start here and pass to the posterior of the rectus abdominis like so. So this is the transverse abdominis muscle. Next, we'll have the internal oblique muscle And as I did in the previous diagrams, I'm going to use green to represent the internal oblique. And draw the muscle in on each side. And then sketch in the tendon. And remember, the tendon splits into two layers. A deep layer that passes posterior to the rectus abdominis like so and a superficial layer which passes to the anterior of the rectus abdominis like so you notice all these tendons are meeting in the midline at what will become the linea alba. And the 
again. Let's label the internal oblique. So, finally, we'll have the external oblique. And the external oblique will draw in on each side in blue. Again, same color I used in the previous diagrams. So here is the external oblique. And we'll need the tendon of the external oblique, which will be on the anterior side of the rectus abdominis like so. So we put the label in for the external oblique here. And we will then have the linea alba. And I want to emphasize the linea alba by highlighting it in, in black. And the linea alba is right here in the center where all these tendons come together. the linea alba. Now, the tendons of the three flat muscles, the external oblique, the internal oblique, and the transverse abdominus, surround the rectus abdominus and form the rectus sheath. And we can speak of two layers of the rectus sheath, at least above the level of the arcuate line. The two layers would be a superficial and a deep layer. So this would be the deep layer of the rectus sheath.
there. And that deep layer is formed by the tendon of transverse abdominis and the deep half of the tendon of internal oblique. And then we'll have a superficial layer of the rectus sheath. I put in the other circle and So this is the superficial layer of the rectus sheath, and again, I'll draw a line to it, connect up the label. And the superficial layer is formed by the superficial half of the internal oblique tendon and the tendon of external oblique. Now, these tendons are what are referred to as an aponeurosis. An aponeurosis is a broad, flat tendon of this kind. It looks like a sheet. And these aponeurotic tendons form a channel through which the rectus abdominis passes. What this does is allow the rectus abdominis to function, to contract, even when the other three muscles are pulling tight on the midline. If this sheath didn't exist, when the obliques and transverse abdominis tightened across the midline, it would inhibit the action of the rectus abdominis and it would not be able to contract, at least not contract as efficiently as it should. But being surrounded as it is, these muscles aren't pulling on the rectus, they're pulling on the linea alba and the rectus can still move in the middle. Now I'll complete the diagram with some fascia. We have the transversalis fascia immediately internal or deep to the transverse abdominis. So this is the transversalis fascia. And we'll draw a connecting line to the fascia. And then finally we'll have the parietal peritoneum just deep to the transversalis fascia. Now 
the parietal peritoneum I mentioned would be analogous to the parietal pleura in the thorax. The transversalis fascia is analogous to the endothoracic fascia. And the parietal peritoneum is the lining of the serous sac. And it's the parietal peritoneum is the lining of the serous sac that surrounds the abdominal organs. And the parietal peritoneum forms the outer wall of the peritoneal cavity. The visceral peritoneum, which is attached to the abdominal organs, forms the other side of the peritoneal cavity, which means the peritoneal cavity is just the space in between visceral and parietal peritoneum, much as we saw up with the pericardium and with the pleura. So this gives a closer view of the rectus sheath. Thank you for your attention.